when we think about the future, we often picture this rosy sort of utopia where we'd be so advanced in our technologies that we'd have these robotic servants everywhere, handling our every whim, doing all the work that we don't want to do, taking the grind, more or less removing the monotony of life from us and we live in a much more enriched way, we'll be enjoying ourselves without worry, without problems, maybe even sipping a martini by a beach being served by a robotic butler. As much as that sounds fantastical, as much as that sounds like a work of science fiction from literature or film, there's also very much reality. As if you were to look at the rate of automation in our economies in the past two, three decades, it's just been so rapid that now at the moment, there's automation in almost every facet of our economies, from industries ranging from agriculture to logistics to even complex sectors like finance. So this imagination is now very much real. And as much as it is a utopia, a lot of us are also concerned. There's an overarching question and concern as to when you think about this image that we have in mind, as these tasks are increasingly being done by robots, what happens to the human laborers that were once in charge of these tasks, that were once responsible? Where did they go? They lose their jobs. And that's really been the focus of a lot of the politicians, economists, and also a lot of policy makers lately, as they look at this challenge really, they see it as a challenge. And the reason being, it, it is very simple. Robots can certainly do tasks in a much more efficient, better way than humans and not limited by the human condition. They don't need to sleep, they don't feel tired. Of course, now in the corona context, they don't get sick. But does that mean that eventually they would take and overtake every aspect of, of our economy and our, of our work, really? In fact, a study done by Oxford University recently has actually shown that 47% of jobs will eventually be replaced by robots in the next two decades. And that's very soon. But here's the thing. I think our focus on this sort of rhetoric of automation and the rise of automation means the end of jobs for all, or mass skill unemployment, this sort of apocalypse of job loss is grossly myopic and the reason why is focusing on just job loss is just focusing on just one aspect you see automation and this automation anxiety that i'm talking about tonight isn't a new thing in fact it's been happening with a lot of the technological changes a lot of the technological improvements in our history have actually brought opportunities for automation since the 1920s and advanced industrialization and then also machineries and all these factories, a lot of hard laborers were actually anxious about job loss and they were displaced. Of course, later on with the computing age, with the rise of computers, the question is whether computers would actually replace the jobs of people as well. And of course, now it is about artificial intelligence, algorithms, and also advanced robotics. The same sort of anxiety that we're feeling over and over again. But what history has shown us statistically is that Unemployment has actually stabilized and declined through the ages, with the exception, of course, recessions and financial crises. But overall, actually, there have been more jobs from these technological shifts. And the reason why is, as much as there are undeniably displacements and certain jobs being made obsolete, the automation and also the opportunities that it creates is actually out outweighs all the losses that it creates. Because when you think about new technologies, they actually create a lot of new industries. The supply of new technology technologies actually create a lot of new industries that revolve around the supply of that technology. So of course, if you think about computers, for example, a lot of new computing companies, computer companies selling computers. And we, of course, in the 90s, we saw a lot of that, and they say largely today. But also, aside from direct supply of it, there's also industries that build themselves around this ecosystem that supports the main industry. So. Take, for example, again, computing, software engineering industry, which is massive. A lot of jobs there today did not even exist 50 years ago, but of course now it is booming. So new technologies and automation will undoubtedly create new jobs because of the new industries that will undoubtedly create. But aside from this sort of very direct way where we not only look at the displacement, but also the creation of new jobs, there's also 
the sort of indirect benefits that automation would bring to the economy. Now, if businesses can automate much more, it means they can become much more efficient. And if they can become much more efficient, then they can lower their costs. And by doing that, they can actually expand. Because, of course, they would be able to. And the expansion would mean more jobs are created. But also, being able to lower the cost would also mean, and, and usually in that case being that, they would be able to introduce products that are much more accessible to the market. And so more consumers can actually buy them and create more cash for these companies, giving them more opportunities to expand. But directly for the economy for these consumers, being able to access these products in a much more affordable way means that they would have more spending power elsewhere in the economy. And overall, the entire economy benefits. Again, more capital flows, more jobs potentially. So the point being that overall, automation actually increases economic health and also our standards of living. And that is the thing that we don't really look at. The headlines like to focus on the adversity without really examining the full picture. But that's not to say that isn't um, an issue or challenges that come with automation. I think the biggest challenge isn't so much on this sort of rhetoric that automation will lead to masculine unemployment and just the figures of unemployment. That isn't the issue. That can easily be offset by, again, the job employment opportunities. The issue really is on this, on the educational deficit. Yes, indeed, automation will make certain jobs obsolete. And yes, human laborers would be affected and displaced if they're in those particular jobs. But the issue for them isn't so much that they've lost their jobs, but how do we actually retrain these people, educate them to become more adaptable and nimble in this new sort of economic landscape that has been more or less defined by technological changes so that they can once again bring value to the economy. It really is this. This is where we should really focus you know, the majority of our concerns on them and find solutions for how do we make everyone more adaptable and nimble to technological changes so that we can actually bring value in this new economy. And that really should be the focus of policymakers too. So when we think about the future and this sort of robotic future that is very, very much becoming a reality, we shouldn't worry about the robots taking away our jobs, but we should more or less worry about how can we actually make ourselves more adaptable so that we can bring value in this robotic future? And that really should be the key.